Jay from Bracknell in Berkshire. As you can hear, still the voice has not returned to its usual power. Go I don't know how I'm going to be able to sing at church. They'll have to sing the hymns without me this morning. I can't sing. Oh, I can have a go, I suppose. You know, what's the hymns today? It was it was a particularly dreary hymn to finish with, which I would have changed, to be honest. It's a dreary hymn. I've, I've got the list here. Of the, I get the list every week of the hymns that they're going to sing. Suggested hymns that, that the organist should play. Some people stick to it. I don't. Oh, dear. We want something rousing to finish with, you know. Onward, Christian soldiers marching. At, you know, something with a drum or something like that would be quite nice, wouldn't it? But, uh, yes, voice not back. But, you know, not as bad as it seems, you know, because not dead yet. Do you know what I mean? Not dead yet. Just a partial voice malfunction. Not dead yet. So we carry on, boys. It goes like mummy's brave little soldier. Mummy's brave little... Oh, but can we have our boat back, please? Oh, dear. I did put a little post up on Facebook yesterday mentioning the fact that those Iranians must be kicking themselves, dear. I mean, they must be so disappointed because I saw that boat. Is it a boat or a ship? What's the difference? One's small, is it? And one's big. Anyway, we'll call it a boat. You know, they got that boat back to wherever it's gone to. It's just disappeared, isn't it? Oh, yes, the boat. Has, they don't know where it is. How can you not know where a massive boat is? You go down that road later on, my dear, and you go one mile over the speed limit and they know the eyes are watching. They are watching. Yes, a camera will have you. Massive great boat. No, can't find it. Can't find it anywhere. I mean, how thick can people be? They cannot find the boat. But those Iranians they must be ever so upset because I saw some pictures of that boat on the BBC News Channel yesterday. No pool on the top deck. Why would you want to steal a boat with no pool on the top deck? Not only that, no windows in the cabins. What's all that about? You know, why would you go on a cruise and there's no little windows on the cabins? No, by the looks of things, no entertainment downstairs either. What, they must be fuming, those Iranians. So if you don't want it, we'll have it back, please. Because you're not going to have any fun on there, are you? Oh, it might be a bit of oil on there. How long is that going to keep you going? Exactly. And do you need oil in Iran? That's the other thing, dear. I gather it's been very hot there always, isn't it? You don't get cold weather in Iran. Can we have that boat back, please, if you don't mind? Thank you ever so much. Just send it on its way, dear. No problem at all. And talking of hot weather, it's on its way. How do millennials deal with hot weather? Ever thought of that? You know, do they wake up in the morning? Oh, 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 it's, oh this hot weather. Oh, this, this hot weather is really offensive. I'm offended by this hot weather. Oh, no, I can't cope. Oh, I can't cope. I'm going to have to go to my safe space. My safe space. I can't cope with this hot weather. It's offensive. <laughs> well, I don't know what, what my hatred for millennials is. I don't know where it comes. <laughs> I've just joined... This is all very set. Now, don't tell anyone. This is our little secret. Now, someone said that to me once before I come. No, this is our little secret. OK, don't tell anyone. Ready? I've just joined on Facebook an over 50s group. D don't laugh. Do not laugh. I've just joined an over 50s group on Facebook. And there's no holds barred there. The humour is there, my boys and girls. And I love it. Someone's left there this morning. She couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> Ow, this is really misogynic and all this. Stuff. Oh, please. Well, go then. Go. I've just joined it. Hilarious comments on there. I put my, my millennial monopoly joke on there. You know that one, don't you? Do you know that one? The millennial monopoly joke? That is, is the fact that they bought out a new... New monopoly, especially for millennials. It doesn't matter what they land on, they can't afford it. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, the hot weather is coming. As mentioned, how you're going to deal with it, I do not know. Yes, uh, in the sun this morning, it says, because, of course, the schools have just gone on holiday, if you have children. Oh, isn't that lucky for you? They're going to be around you for the next six weeks. 
You know that little laying that when you go to bed, sometimes you drop them off at school. I have to stop a little lay down on the settee for a while. No, won't be able to do that for six weeks. Anyone who goes swimming like me, we won't be able to move in the swimming pool. They'd be jumping in that pool all over the place, screaming, running around, little bikes everywhere. Got a nice little front lawn outside the front of your house, have you? They'd be over there with their bikes, churning it all up, screaming and shouting and moaning that they're bored after two days. Mum, I've got nothing to do. I'm bored now. What can I do now? You won't be able to get near the telly. You know, you won't be able to watch something you want, want, want to watch on the telly. Those those sad members among you that watch programmes like Lorraine. Oh, how lovely. Oh, how lovely. Oh, hello, hello and welcome to Lorraine. Oh, ghastly woman. Dreadful programme. You won't be able to watch uh, Philip and, and Holly Willabooby on this morning. But the good news is you won't be forced to watch Tenable the most bland, boring quiz show ever brought out in the history of television. Tenable, with that Warwick Davis, with that with that fault, fake, fake smile. Uh, hello and welcome to Tenable. Oh, is that really interesting. And what do you do for a living? Like we're remotely interested. We're not. Just give us the bloody questions, dear. Give us the question and give them quickly. Give them quickly. You know, what's one and one? Hello, there, nah, two. OK, what's the capital of the UK? Uh, London. Not, you know, what's the capital of the UK? Uh, now, I don't think it's Birmingham. No, I don't. Just give us the damn answers. Give the contestants five seconds to give you their answer. Otherwise, they lose the point. Boring, boring, boring. You won't be able to get near that telly. Now your kids are on holiday. <laughs> and just imagine all that extra cleaning that you're going to have to do in the house. You don't think just because the school children are on holiday, they're going to make their own beds, do you? No. Number one, you'll have to get them out of bed first before you even make the damn thing. Hoover in every half an hour. <laughs> don't think your, your, your lady friends are going to come round for a cup of coffee anymore. <coughs> <coughs> they'd be too busy with their own children, wouldn't they? Eh? Well, in the sun this morning, school children will get a sweltering start to the summer break this week. 34, there's going to be a 34 degree centigrade. Uh, oh, no, not Arctic. African, was this that same place, isn't it? Arctic and Africa? I don't know. I got unclassified for geography. <laughs> unclassified. Useless. Not intelligent. Not me. Are you an intelligent person? No, absolutely not. Never, ever pretend to be anything that you're not because someone will come and break you down. So you admit it for a little bit like George Michael. Do you remember George Michael with the toilet incident in America? And they bought the, the papers were about to crucify. God rest his soul is in heaven now or somewhere. Um, the papers were about to crucify him for that one. Got caught in the toilet, didn't they, with someone else? Yes. So they bought him on the telly well, and he sat there. Well, I haven't done anything wrong. What I did was this. I went into the toilet and met another man. That's it. That was it then. They had no chance at all. He just stood there and said that. No chance. You know, ne never admit to something that you're not. I, I could sit here and say I'm a very holy person. and I'm not. I'm not. I just like to go to church and have a sing song. I'm sorry. That's how I am, lovey. Call me old fashioned, if you will. Anyway, uh, yes, the 34 degree African flume, that's centigrade, of course. So in Fahrenheit, 34 degrees, that's 30, 60, uh, 79. Three, that's about, that's about 230 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to be here in the UK next week. Absolutely. 34 degrees is about 295 degrees Fahrenheit. Something around that figure. Might not be exact, but it's around that figure. I can do all the calculations in my... I'm quite good with maths, especially with money. Especially with money. Let me tell you, if you owe me so much as a penny, I will always remember that. I will never forget. Don't think that 20 years down the line, right, you know, you're sitting next to me in the car, chatting away or something like, and I've forgotten. No, I haven't. Not until you replace that penny that you stole from me years ago or borrowed. Man, oh, Chris, have you got years? I mean, I don't lend, as you know, I lend money to no one anymore, ever. Never lend money to friends, no one. 
If family want to borrow a bit, they usually get it, and I'm not bothered whether it comes back or not, as long as it's not over to, you know, obviously, as long as it's not over the sum of £1.50. I just don't care. I just give the £1.50, and I forget about it sometimes. But anyone else other than family, no, nope, I never lend money. And I would advise you to do the same. If I had £5 for every £5 that I lent people in the past, oh, I'd be a very rich person. Even as rich as Diane Strelly, who's with us this morning. That's it. Forecasters are predicting the hottest day of the year uh, when a scorching weather front moves in on Wednesday. So I'll be in the caravan, which will be, oh, unbearably hot. Luckily, I've got my little air conditioning thing in there. Uh, the hot weather will come only after a dreary day of cloud and showers on Sunday. Looks all right to me. We've got blue sky here at the moment and a washout on Monday. So that's good, isn't it? The plants will get uh, uh, will get a good uh, good watering on Monday before the sunshine comes, which is all very good. I must say, I haven't been back here uh, in Bracknell for two weeks. And, uh, my plants, some of my plants were looking a little bit like that. Water. As I came down the path late on uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, I could hear them. Uh, uh, please. Uh, uh, the rhododendron in particular was screaming at me. Uh, 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 water, water. Poor rhododendron. Probably won't give me any flowers next year as punishment, will it? Shall I see what people are with us today, boys and girls? We need... <coughs> There's the first message, uh, first message list. Right, who got the first message in this morning? Let's have a look. It's Diane Strelly. Another name to the list. This is not working out as I wanted it to, really. Diane Strelly. Good morning, Diane. There we are. I've got a list here, Diane. You haven't been, you don't know about this, uh, but we're just for this month only, we're taking names of the person who gets the first message of the show in. And at the end of the month, whoever got the first message in the most times gets a certificate signed by me. Ah, worth a fortune on it. No, there's no frame. I'm not buying a frame. I just get printed off on my black and white printer over there. There's no frame. No, it doesn't come laminated or in a piece of glass. Nothing. Just a bit of paper. That's it. They're going mad. They're going mad in the morning, rowing and screaming and shout just like members of parliament. Trying to get that first message in. This morning, it's Diana. Uh, you've got one more. Here's the list at the moment. Here's the list. There we are. Look at that. Look at, look at that. Three marks for Shania there. She is way in the lead. Way, way in the lead. She's down... Um, oh, is she, is she there this morning? I think she's down at Portsmouth Cathedral this morning. She served on the altar. At, I've never served on the altar at a cathedral. Well done, my dear. Well done. So good morning to Diane Strelly. First message of the day from Diane. Hello to Adam the Plumber. Good morning, Adrian Richardson. There's Shania. Good morning, Shania. Uh, Paul Mosley. Morning, Paul. Joanna there over on the YouTube. Good morning, lovely Joanna. Oh, you, I hope you were there for my first little bit of singing earlier on. Onward, Christian soldiers. What would you like next? Would you like something different next? I could do all types of religious uh, religious music. I do. Not just a Catholic. There's this one. Hi, 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 Which you can often hear in East London. I do all the different religions. All the different religions there. Uh, we like to feel inclusive of everyone. Let's have another colour in here, shall we, to include someone else. <coughs> oh, dear. <coughs> I can't see me staying here for very long this morning, to be honest. Morning to Christina. Christina Ewing in the house. Morning. Diane Jeff. Hello, Diane. Earplugs at the ready. Talking of ears, look what I've got. Yeah, remember I've got my itchy ears. I bought this from the uh, from Boots. Why is Boots so expensive? I bought two items in there, like 16 quid. You know, I bought the um, Gaviston Advanced for when I get a, a little bit of an acid problem. And I bought this for my ears because they've been very itchy. And you put, I, I haven't done it yet. I thought I'd do this live on the television for you this morning. I just... just <laughs> My whole life is just sitting here in front of you. Here we go. Right, here we are. Right, you ready? Well, watch a bit. So you shake it. Shake it three times a day, apparently. Right, here we go. Just one in there. Right, I think you've got to let it drain down into the ear hole. Okay. And then one on this side as well. There we are. Oh, I can hear it going in. I could feel it going in then. Pardon? 
<sighs> that's done. There we are. That's done now until later on tonight. And now I can't hear anything. <laughs> Have you tried this? It's called Ear Calm. Nearly seven quid for that. That. Ah! Seven quid for that. I went in Audi yesterday, an entire bag of shopping and a half for 13 quid. Loads of stuff. They're queuing up in there, dear. Um, morning to Michael Lawrence, who's going to give up. He's giving up trying to get the message in first. Well, let's see how far behind everyone else you were. 9, 12 and 55. Uh, Diana was 9, 7 and 4. You were like five minutes behind everyone else, Michael. <laughs> That's why. You're not even trying, dear. You're not trying hard enough. A lot of people find me very trying, to be honest. They do, darling. Um, <laughs> Diane, uh, oh, sorry, no, let me see. Adrian, did they have an over 70s group? Is that why you can join the over 50s? Did they have an over 70s group? I don't know. There might be one of those on there, Adrian. You know, you're supposed to be over 70, but looking at you, I think you're past. I think you're past. Go on the over 70s group there. Diane says, love it when my daughter's off. She's 14. Oh, she's going to the caravan for two weeks, then back for two days. Going to Hungary. Oh, what's there? What, what's at Hungary? What, what is there of... Um, I don't know anything about Hungary at all, I'm afraid. There was a nice boy who, used to, who was from Hungary and he used to come and sing at the karaoke at uh, Belushi's in London Bridge. Can't remember his name now. But uh, I know nothing at all about Hungary. And it's the first time Diane's going to be on a plane. Oh, Diane. Nothing to worry about, lovey. It's a lovely, lovely experience. Unless you go in economy. Oh, God. Oh, the smell in that back of the plane. Oh, bleh. Bleh. Oh, my God. You're not sitting in the back of the plane, are you, Diane? Oh, my God. It stinks. Take a gas mask with you. And if you're going on a Ryanair or an EasyJet, take your own sandwiches, dear. Because they're very expensive on there. Very expensive. Ah, huh? Be careful, my love. Oh, oh, keep your purse with you. Keep your purse with you at all times. <clears throat> uh, Michael Pullman. Good morning, Michael. Let's see. Um, let's just scroll down a little bit uh, there. Tim Beckett. Good morning. Tim says 34 degrees is 93.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Is it? Is that right, Tim? No, I'm sure you're... Let me work that out again. So it's 34... 34 minus uh, 7 and plus 2, 3, 4... Now, I'm working at 192.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Are you sure you're using the right calculation there, Tim? Or is it minus something? Is it minus 38 degrees Fahrenheit? I'm sure it's something that... I think you're incorrect there, actually, Tim. Sorry, perhaps you'll want to recheck that before you give us false information like that on the. Pro this is not fake news. This program, we don't do fake news on here. Only hard. This is a hard-hitting international political talk show. This is, you know, very popular among all, all the MPs. Watch this. Theresa May watches this. She won't pop up. You know, she likes to remain um, uh, secret. That she's there. She watches this program. She's always on the phone. Oh, hello. She ring. She normally rings up. She won't won't mind me telling you. She usually rings me afterwards. Hello, Chris. Yeah, I uh, love the show this morning. Thank you for having us. That's all. We have a little bit of a chat on the phone, Theresa May and myself. You know, she's changing her number next week, isn't she? <laughs> she's getting a new phone number. <laughs> and a new house as well, love. <laughs> I'm so glad Joanna made, managed to make it for the, for the early song this morning. All right. Uh, Diane says, are you still watching Love Island? No, I don't watch it. I don't watch it. The bad news is Gemma Collins has got a TV show again soon. Is that right? Oh, God, blimey. It just gets better and better, this world, doesn't it? That's why I'm on the over 50s group. We don't have to suffer people like Gemma Collins or Love Island. We're just on there talking about Dad's Army all day. Proper television, dear. As a story, they're remaking um, three of the lost episodes uh, uh, from Dad's Army. When I say lost episodes, what the BBC used to do was record everything on tapes. And then once the programme had aired, they used to wipe the tapes and use the tapes again. Right. So they've lost episodes of Dad's Army. Well, the TV station Gold has commissioned someone to remake these episodes. And it's, it's looking quite. I saw a story in the paper yesterday. 
But apparently, and they're doing it in front of a live audience, which would be, you know, if you want to be true to the original, that's what you've got to do. And, um, uh, but they had to keep stop, they had, they had to stop, they had to keep stopping filming because every time Private um, Corporal Jones says they don't like him up and Captain, they don't like it up and those Germans don't like it up and the audience were screaming and shouting and cheering and it weren't going down too well on the recording. But uh, looking forward to that, I don't think I can get gold, but uh, my mate will have that on Sky. He'll have gold. He's off to, um, he's gone to Spain. My mate's on holiday. He's gone, went to Spain yesterday. Uh, I don't know what, I th it looked like it, he got delayed because I think he said he he had his plane flight at 7.30. But according to my, you know, find your friends thing, he didn't get to Alicante till about 11.30. So there must have been, it don't take that long to get to Spain, does it? Isn't it like 45 minutes? The same as going to Scotland. It's a very quick journey, isn't it? To Spain. Yes. Um... Adrian says, Hungary makes very good cake and pastries. Ooh. Oh, that sounds nice. Perhaps we could get some, get them to send some here, Adrian. I do like cake and pastries, as you can see from my waist. <laughs> McDonald's apple pies are, are particularly of my favourite as well. Um, I think it's time for the fake news, Dinger. Do you want the fake news? Because there is no fake news on this programme. Fake news is the enemy of the people. We are fighting the fake news. It's fake, phony, fake. A few days ago, I called the fake news the enemy of the people, and they are. They are the enemy of the people. They're very dishonest people. That I called the fake news the enemy of the people, the fake news. And now I'm saying, oh, no, this is no good. But you are fake news. But I am... Only against the fake news media or press. Fake. Fake. We don't like fake news and there's no fake news on this programme. This is how life is, boys and girls. Thank you to Tim. What's that you're sending there, Tim? Oh, no, Tim. I, I can't. I haven't got time to look at little formulas or anything like that, Tim. I really haven't. You know, I mean, have a little look in another couple of books. I'm sure you'll find that I'm right. And like 34 degrees centigrade is actually minus 16 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm sure it is. I think you're incorrect there, Tim. I really do. Um, Paul loves the fake news. You love the fake news jingle, don't you? <laughs> Sorry, I've got itchy nose now. Itchy ears. Everything is itching this morning. Ev I'm, everything is itching this morning. You can't see my hands under here, can you? Now, uh, as I say, my mate's just gone to uh, Spain for a little holiday and he's looking forward to that. Anyone going to Egypt? Cairo. British Airways have stopped the flights to Cairo, haven't they? Oh, can you just imagine that? Getting And some people had got to the airport and they were turned away there and then. I mean, you have to uh, you have to understand, you know, British Airways, they wouldn't do this unless they have some sort of, you know, they're a bit worried about your safety. So when you get to the airport... And they say, we're really sorry, we're not flying to Cairo, there's a security risk. Do you understand that they're looking after your interests? No problem. Oh, well, I paid, I'm going. No, you're not, mate. You're not going. They're trying to look after your interests. And um, uh, it says here, uh, uh, on in the Daily Mirror today, and I was surprised at this, there's a whole long, it's quite a long article, I won't do the whole thing. Is your holiday destination safe? Latest terror threat levels and travel advice. And there's a lot. Good morning, Russ. Morning to you, Russ. It says, the summer holidays uh, have now begun. Summer hot. We're all going. Here, yeah, Joanna. We're all going on a summer holiday. No more working for a week or two. Yeah, baby. The summer holidays have begun at last and a trip abroad is now on a lot of people's minds. From Turkey to Spain, British people are set to flood the countries for some sun, sea and sand. And that's all you get at my age. The sun, the sea and the sand. You don't get the other one. It's just how it is. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Although terrorist attacks are considered likely or very likely in some destinations, millions of us head abroad every year without a problem, reports the Chronicle Live. This weekend, British Airways announced it was suspended its flights to Cairo due to security concerns, disrupting trips for thousands of holidaymakers. 
Where is safe to go and where should you avoid travelling to? What precautions should you take while travelling? Here we take a look at the UK government's uh, travel advice for destinations across the globe. So, yeah, and then there's a, there's a list as long as your arm here of countries um, uh, that have got a little bit of a problem. And you'd be surprised at some of them. Good morning to uh, Ian Day joining us on YouTube there. Good morning, Ian. It says Australia. Australia. Perfectly safe, isn't it? Well, it says on the government website, terrorists are likely to try to carry out attacks in Australia, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office says. The current national terrorism level is probable. It says that over 670,000 British nationals visit Australia. I've been five times to Australia. I love it. I love the... The, the, the lighter pace of life, which actually isn't too different when you get in Lincolnshire. <laughs> I was talking to Auntie Brenda about this because she was up there last week um, when we were at the 1940s weekend. And it's true to say, you know, when, when you've been up Lincolnshire for a couple of weeks and then you come back down south, you realise how many people and how busy it is all the time. Busy, 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 busy. The roads, the bars, the shops, busy, 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 all the time. <clears throat> it says attacks in Australia could be indiscriminate, including places visited by foreigners. You should be vigilant and take sensible precautions. And it says there's also a wider risk of tropical cyclones, which occur, occur mainly in Queensland, which I've been there, Northern Territory and Western Australia between November and uh, April. All right. So that's what I want. What about the Bahamas? The Bahamas. It's not just terrorists here, you see. In the Bahamas, UK health authorities have classified the Bahamas as having a risk of Zika virus transmission. And cases of chikung chikungunya, I don't know how to say that, uh, virus <coughs> have been, that's perhaps that's what I've got in my throat, have been confirmed with visitors advised to take steps to avoid being bitten by mosquitoes. Well, I mean, we all do that, don't we? We all put this stuff on. I was terrible in Cyprus. I kept getting bitten, but, oh, I had some terrible bites on me in Cyprus. It was awful, awful. And I put the stuff on. The thing is, with that stuff you put on, you've got to keep doing it. Don't put it on first thing in the morning and think that's it, you've done it. No. Every few hours, you've got to put this damn cream on to stop those mosquitoes, haven't you? It also says uh, there's no recent history of terrorism but in the Bahamas, but attacks can't be ruled out. What about Belgium? Well, it says there are often demonstrations taking place in Brussels, particularly around transport hubs and the Schumann area. There can be isolated incidents and people are urged to remain vigilant. I mean, does any of this stuff stop you going abroad? I don't know, really. And it goes on. Uh, we've got the Egypt one. Uh, Egypt at the moment. It's, it shows you the letter, actually, that British Airways have sent to people. And it says on the letter, Dear customer, we're sorry to inform you that your flight from London Heathrow to Cairo has been cancelled. We constantly review our security arrangements at all our airports around the world and have suspended flights to Cairo for seven days as a precaution to allow for further assessment. And, and the letter goes on. So they actually show you the letter. And that's in the Daily Mirror this morning. Um, lots of various different countries there and the advice uh, given and that sort of thing. But does that, would that stop you going abroad? Uh, you may, may probably know I went to Israel on holiday and um, it was one of the best holidays I've ever been on. I found the country absolutely fascinating. All the religions there, the, all the religions are there. Uh, of course, I was more interested in the Christian side of things and I went to places where Joseph was supposed to have his workshop and and Jesus was born and Jesus was crucified and the stations of the cross, if you know what they are. Um, mayor, stuff with mayor and all that business, you know, and I was there. All this stuff I'd read about in Bibles and books and school. And then I was there. Oh, God, I can't tell you how fantastic that feels to be standing there. at I don't know. Number five station of the cross. No, or, not, or, or where, where, where someone, where Jesus fell down and all this business. And you're there. All this stuff you learnt about in the books and you were there. Did it bother me that, that you know, now and again Israel is bombed? No, not at all. Strange, isn't it, really? And uh, leading up to the holiday, 
people were telling me, oh, please don't go, please don't go, you know, you get bombed or you get shot or something like that. Let me tell you, I got there, I've never felt so safe in the country. Oh, the army are all over the place. But remember, the army are there to protect you. Certainly, uh, there was a particular large amount of, of army type um, people uh, in Jerusalem. And uh, we got on this little minibus and coach and doing our tourist type things. And we had to go into the the old town of Jerusalem, which is where all the like shops are, endless shops, selling so much trash, it's unbelievable. But nevertheless, we wanted to go and see us. So we went in there and we had to go through this checkpoint and, and uh, our, our guide, and you know, he, had dark, he looked like a guide. He had the dark glasses on, the thing hanging around his neck with a little label on. And it was all us, you know, following him like little lap dogs. And uh, we were coming up to this checkpoint. There's a couple of barriers across the road. I think, you know, two like that. And I don't know, a dozen or so army type men and women uh, and boy. I have to say boys. Some of these, they look like little boys holding some of these guns. And these guns, they weren't like shiny and new like the British ones. They were like old and battered. They'd been well used, these guns. And they're standing, they, ho they hold their gun. They, I don't know, I've, I wasn't in the army. I've never held a gun in my life. But, uh, uh, but I mean, I've got a, 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 I had an air rifle. That's about it all. I used to shoot at uh, the targets. <coughs> they kind of hold their guns down like that. And we would approach. And um, as they must, they must know the guide. Presumably, it's the same people there all the time. I don't know. And he saw the guide, and he waved, and they waved, and they opened the barrier, and we walked through. And as we walked through, they smiled and nodded their heads. That was it. That was it. That was it. Really, you know. No, it, it didn't. It, it it didn't occur to me. I mean, people were going on and on. Not please don't go to Israel, and uh, it did not occur to me not to go. I didn't for one thing. Oh no, maybe I shouldn't go. No, I just went. So would you still go to Egypt? Would that would that bother you at all? I wonder. I, Egypt doesn't really... I mean, the pyramids... Um, uh, I don't know. Um, doesn't really appeal to me, Egypt. There are the pyramids. That's about it, isn't it? You just go and see these three. My niece has been to Egypt. My niece and her husband, before they had the children. And... Um, uh, they they went to the pyramids and they horrendously commercialised. Everywhere you go, people are selling stuff all the time, you know. And it's, it's just a pain in the ass when you go on holiday like that. I had this in a Barbados on the beach. You know, people constantly coming up and trying to sell you coconuts or gold watches or anything in... So-called gold. Gold watches or anything in between. All the blooming time they were coming up trying to sell you stuff. Oh, Christ, all the time. Gets on your nose. You don't want that, do you? I mean, don't you get that in Skegness? <laughs> you go on the beach in Skegness and you can quite happily just walk along. No one comes and tries to sell your gold watches. Just fake Burberry stuff. <laughs> do you want to buy a hat, mate? <laughs> I suppose in the war years, I mean, I'm, I'm, believe it or not, I'm too young to know the war years. You'd be walking along. Uh, you want to buy any stockings? Do you want some sausages? <laughs> sausages! <laughs> no, none of that in Skegness. You just go on holiday and that's it. You book a little hotel and a bed and breakfast or something like that. Lovely. You ain't got to go on a plane. You, if you go to Skegness on a holiday, you won't have to get on a plane. You won't be cancelled. You just get there and start your holiday. Marvellous. No passport control. Or Cleethorpes. Cleethorpes is better than Skegness. That's better. That's even nicer. Oh, it's lovely long, long promenade in, in, in Cleethorpes. Beautiful restaurant on the pier, fish and chip restaurant, where you won't be ripped off. Pe Pe Pedro's? Oh, what's this? No, I think it's called Pedro's. I can't remember. It was there last week. Lovely. That's why I do the karaoke on Thursday night in, um, in, uh, in Cleethorpes. I've got the poster here. Hang on, let me see. Oh, it is. Look, there it is. There we are. That's where I am Thursday nights. So why not go on holiday to Cleethorpes and as part of your holiday, come along to my karaoke at Silhouette's Bar. There it is. Silhouette Bar 38 Alexander Road in Cleethorpes. Every Thursday from nine o'clock. All right. So there we are. Uh, let's just do some of your messages there. Good morning to uh, Mr. Gregorian. 
Good morning, Dr. SRS Gregorian. Hello to uh, Gary Butler. Good morning, Gary. That's uh, Playtime with Evie and Harry. That's my nephew's, one of my nephew's channels. He do, he's got a chat where he's not actually on it, I don't think. It's just Evie, great niece Evie and great nephew Harry. They do little videos. So if you want to have a look at those, it's play. The channel's called Playtime with Evie and Harry, okay? Uh, Gary, I did. You mentioned the electric bikes. We were talking about electric bikes the other day, and you said they'd increase the speed limit to 30. I looked on the government website, and it still says 15. So I'm not sure if you've got the right uh, info there. Where, where did you get it from? And I'll uh, double check it. Um, I, I was thinking, not, probably not at the moment, because they are a little bit expensive. But I'm thinking about buying an electric bike because I have a problem with one of my knees. Uh, which is made worse by cycling. But if I go like today, and it hasn't stopped me cycling, but oh, hang on a minute, it's 10 to return. Oh, no, hang on, 11. I've, I've, I've got the mass time wrong then. It's 11, isn't it? Not 10, I've got the mass. Um, yes, after a trip on a bike, uh, more than sort of 10 or 15 minutes um, after that, usually not on the bike, but after that, uh, I start having a problem with my left hand knee right in the corner there. Uh, um, a bloke uh, who lives just a few doors down, actually. Uh, Phil is his name. Lovely man he is. Uh, he's just bought an electric bike and he says it's made all the difference. You still pedal, but you don't have to pedal so hard, you see. And it's when I pedal hard with that left leg that the problem starts occurring. You can't, if you keep, I mean, you know, I, I tend to use my right leg for the power, for the pushing down. Well, you can't just use your right leg all the time because that would start going wrong as well, wouldn't it? Something like that. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't know if you can look that up, Gary, where you find that information uh, that they'd increase the speed limit on electric bikes from 15 to 30. Because I can't, I went on the government website, funnily enough, last night looking for this, and it says it's restricted, I think, to 15 and a half miles an hour. Why 15 and a half and not 15? I don't know. Maybe that's some technical thing there. I don't know. Um,. Adrian flew to Egypt nine days after 9-11. Plane was nice and empty. Queues at the airport, very empty. I loved it. That's why I like. Yeah, I don't like too many people, Adrian. Um, not really. Oh, Joanna's got a go already. So early, Joanna. Enjoy your day, darling. All right, my love. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, there you go. Uh, Gary went to Cuba. Uh, he preferred Cuba over Egypt. There's somewhere I haven't been to uh, as well, Cuba. <clears throat> But uh, my nephew and uh, his uh, new wife at the time, that I think they went there for honeymoon. I think it was Cuba, wasn't it? Good morning to LaBelle. Morning, LaBelle. Your emerald-eyed knight in shining blue blazer is here for you this morning, LaBelle. You're a bit late, though, darling. <laughs> we won't be, won't be here much longer today. My voice, actually, my voice is better than it was at the beginning. Maybe that's a secret, to sing and talk even more, if at all possible. And that, that will cure my voice. Do I have a sore throat? Yes, I do. Yeah, it's been like this since Tuesday, LaBelle, unfortunately. It has been like that since Tuesday. All right. Now, talking of plane journeys and such like, there's... Now, I can't... If I, I apologise if I've already read you this story, um, which I may well have done last week while I was in Lincolnshire, but it's popped up again on Daily Mirror this morning. And it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Uh, recently, one of the most hotly contested aviation debates was settled, goes the story. Getting the middle seat on an airplane, the short straw, means you get both armrests. Did you know that? Apparently it does. Whether or not you do or not, I don't know. You know, getting that, that armrest in the middle. Oh, it's a nightmare. Those, those planes where all the seats are squashed together is just awful. It says... Another rouse erupted after one female passenger's actions were called out on social media. So where do you stand on this? Tell me where you stand on this, OK? The woman in question was captured on camera with her hair draped over the back of the seat, obscuring the TV screen for the person behind. How disgusting is that? That is just awful. We know how we feel about this, but not everyone seethed with righteous anger. An Australian man called David shared the picture of his fellow passenger. In no time, the comments come floating in with one reading, how rude, where's a pair of scissors when you... So you just imagine, right, you're so, so you're sitting on the plane, yeah, sitting on the plane. You're watching the telly, or maybe you're having your dinner, 
And this hair comes over the back of your seat. She's gone like this, you know, like that. Isn't that disgusting? Would that bother you? Because it would bloody well bother me. I don't know if I'd go as far as cutting it. Maybe a bit of super glue. They'd never know. That's <laughs> a little bit of super glue. You know, you could sit there and you know, why don't you? And then super glue a bit of her hair. <laughs> Because it's it works very quickly, super glue, doesn't it? Are you, they'd never know. What you do is you super glue their hair and then go to the toilet and dispose of the evidence. <laughs> Another comment came in. It said, it's revolting. You can't tell me they don't know what they're doing unless, of course, they're that stupid. It's disgusting. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? It's just awful and disgusting what some people do in complete disrespect to the person who's sitting behind you. Awful, awful. Uh, what's that? LaBelle says, I can't watch you at this, at this time during the week. I have to be up to teach theatre dance. Yes, she does theatre dancing. Teaching. Teaching, LaBelle. She's a very, very busy person until September, so you enjoy doing that, my darling. All right. Um, uh, that's all my news stories, really. Yes, that's it, gang. That's it. We're going to do it a little. It's a little bit of a shorter show this morning because I'm really uh, feeling that, really. Uh, Adrian says, know what you should do is open the table with some back of the chair and then close it back up. What a good idea. That's the best one. C open the table up when the hair's over there, then close it on the hair. And then when she cares, tries to get up. <laughs> that's much better, Adrian. An excellent idea if you don't mind me saying so, sir. <laughs> All righty. Uh, let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls. Happy birthday on this Sunday, the 21st of July, 2019. I'll do yesterday's birthdays as well as we weren't here yesterday. Uh, to, to Johnny Pablo Morrison, who's 23 years old today. I only met Johnny once. He was a customer in a place in Clapham that I used to work. Happy birthday, Johnny. Uh, Kieran Sheard. Good morning, Kieran. He's uh, He was one of the barmen. I don't know if he's still there at... Um, Oh, what's the place in Camden Town now? I can't remember the name. Is it the old house? No. The corner house? No. Oh, I can't remember. A place in uh, Camden that I worked for about a year. It was a good job, actually. Unfortunately, the management changed and uh, they didn't want the karaoke there. It's one of those things. So happy birthday to you, Kieran. He's, he can sing as well. He's got a good voice. Happy birthday, Kieran. Uh, happy 31st birthday today to Hatim Demouth. Good morning, Hatim. Uh, to James Ray Ingrams. You get the uh, the Golden Award today. 77 years old, James. Happy birthday to you, sir. Uh, happy birthday to Jeffrey Decker, a young 27 years old today. Uh, Shaney Pops. Good morning, Shaney. Happy birthday to you. Andy Henley. Good morning, Andy Henley. Happy birthday to young Andy. Uh, Gary Lovegrove today is 48 years old. So that's the birthdays for Sunday, the 21st of July 2019. Yesterday's birthday, so that's Saturday, the 20th of July. Teresa Adams yesterday was 48 years old. Happy birthday, Teresa. Angel Hart, she only lives up the road from me, reaches the wonderful 65 years old. Good morning, Angel. Happy birthday, Angel. Tracy uh, Moynihan, 47 years old yesterday. Morning, Tracy. And Richard Clark's birthday as well yesterday. So happy birthday, boys and girls. Here comes a song. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Yes, happy birthday boys and girls. LaBelle says, I, I miss seeing you live, but uh, watch the replays. Oh, I'm glad you still watch the replays. Yeah, some people do. Uh, most, a lot of people. More people probably watch the replays than are with us live, actually. Talking of live shows, uh, my brother-in-law, Martin Butler, <coughs> he's doing his first live show today. He's, he's not actually hosting the show. I think it's uh, a bloke called um, Roy is the Boy. I think that's his name. Roy is the Boy, who sometimes... I don't think he's with us this morning. But Roy the Boy is hosting a, um, a, a live... It's either a live YouTube or a live Facebook. It's either one or the other, not all of them. 
uh, and Martin's been involved in that. Somehow they're going to have uh, like four, four different um, uh, pictures on this. Whereas here you can only see me. They're going to have like four people on there uh, talking to each other. So I should be watching that. Around about two o'clock this afternoon, apparently. So I'm looking for. Oh no, don't just don't know how that's going to quite work really. Um, four people on one on one program. But uh, uh, I shall give that little watch later at two o'clock. That's my my brother-in-law, Martin Butler. Uh, he had, I hope he put a link up so that we can find where it is, actually, and uh, and see that later. Adrian, hope you get yourself ready for my birthday greetings as your previous three years. This will be wishing me happy birthday. I'm devastated if you do it again. Why didn't you? Did you? Hang on a minute. Did we miss it for the last three years then, did we, Adrian? Have you got your birthday set on Facebook? Eh? Because if you haven't, no one's going to find it. OK? Uh, there, people have said this before. Oh, I've just had my birthday. Okay? I just had my birthday and you didn't read it out. And then you look and they don't have the birthday set on their Facebook. So how's anyone supposed to blooming me? Well, no. You know, I don't look for your per particular birthday. It comes up on a list. You get the list of all the birthdays come up. Let me see if you've got yours set. Is that it there? August the 19th. Is that it? Yes, it is. Oh, you've got yours set. So it should come up, shouldn't it, dear? Hopefully it will come up. There we are. Hopefully it will come up. Make sure it's set. If you want your birthday read out, make sure it's set. Otherwise, no one knows it's happening. OK, anyway, that's it for the show today. Thanks very much for, for joining us. Hopefully be with you again at some time uh, tomorrow morning. All right. You have a nice day and I'll see you soon. Bye bye now. Thank you.